Hey guys, no sooner did I finish restoring one of these Admiral console TVs when another one has shown up on my doorsteps. Quite literally, the owner of this set is the same as the owner of these other two Admirals stacked behind it that I recently restored. Well, he's dropped off another one for me to take a look at. And uh, the reason I want to do a video on this right after that one I just restored is that this one is in remarkably good condition. The cabinet uh, <laughs> isn't going to require much work at all, certainly not as much as the last one. I did do a little test waxing on the top and it uh, looks really, really good. There are a few paint flecks and some junk that needs to be cleaned off, but otherwise this thing is in excellent condition. The knobs are a bit tarnished, but that's common for these because they're, they're brass. Uh, but this one is not sun faded at all like that other one. Little cloths in really good shape. And, uh, and so are the insides. I was really surprised to see. In fact, this is the most stock intact Admiral console set I've come across yet. The only minor, well, maybe not so minor flaw on this set is that it's missing the back. I've never seen one come up for sale, and I know there's other guys out there who are looking for them, so it's kind of a shame, but otherwise, uh, this thing is in, well, looks to be remarkably good shape. I haven't pulled the chassis out, which is what I want to do next. I also haven't tested the picture tube, but from what I can see, there's no rust, and everything seems to be here, including every single bolt, nut, washer, etc. Normally when I find sets, the chassis are loose, there's just one bolt holding them in place, but in this set, every single bolt is there. Same with the lower chassis, including all the original rubber mounts that this chassis floats on. It's even got some of the older style tubes in it, the ST Type 5U4. So I'm really curious to see what the condition is underneath. Here's the set next to the set that I just finished restoring, and I think you can see how much darker and richer looking this set is in spite of all my efforts on that side. That's just the effect of the sun fading the bake light. Also, the grill cloth on this is a bit nicer. Uh, and that's mainly because of the gold metallic threads in it, and uh, you really just cannot find grill cloth like that anywhere anymore. So I just have to live with my faded set. Now, for the more important part, what are the insides like? I think I've mentioned a few times before that your choices are very limited when it comes to the pitcher tubes. Well, they're even more limited, or about to become more limited, I should say. So the, there was one outfit left in the United States called Hawkeye that closed about two years ago that would rebuild pitcher tubes. They would cut the neck open, put new electron guns and innards in there, and re-evacuate the tube and so on. Well, they closed, but there is an outfit in France that will do it. You'll have to obviously pay for the shipping there and back. But they uh, can handle pretty much any pitcher tube ever made, but they are closing now too, apparently, uh, in, uh, in the very near future. And when they close, that's it. Whatever limited supply of pitcher tubes exists in the world right now, that will be it. Until, maybe, hopefully, someday, the uh, Antique TV Museum in Hilliard, Ohio, starts uh, restoring, or uh, rebuilding, I should say, pitcher tubes. The thought of anybody actually manufacturing pitcher tubes new from scratch, I, I can't imagine that ever happening. And even rebuilding them is, is going to be a pretty expensive proposition. I mean, even if somebody did start that operation for them to even break even, they're going to have to charge an awful lot, more than most collectors are willing to pay. So I think what will happen is most collectors will do like I do, and you just don't play them that often and hope they last as long as they can. I mean, a lot of these picture tubes I've got now are, 60 plus years old and they can still produce an image so hopefully you know, 50 years are still work but eventually they will 
all start, you know, fade away, and then, well, I don't know what will happen. <laughs> uh, I suppose the, the best possible situation would be there's some breakthrough in manufacturing costs, and the hobbyists can uh, afford to have these made at a, a very reasonable cost. Well, for now, let's just hope this picture tube is still good. Whoa. <laughs> okay. I did not notice this earlier, and the owner of the set did not mention this to me, but we've got a problem. Hopefully, it's not a disastrous problem. I just went to remove the socket from this tube, and I noticed there's a couple wires sticking out. And when I pulled on this more, I realized that this base has completely detached from the pitcher tube. And somebody must have just shoved it back on there. Which is just what happened in that last set I was working on. So I certainly got some experience with this. So let's hope that this thing is still under vacuum and that these leads are still good. One, two, three, four, five. That's how many there should be. They're all still coming out. Well, I'm going to have to investigate this a bit closer and <laughs> keep my fingers crossed, but I was not expecting to see that. I very carefully hooked up the five clip leads to the Suncor CRT tester. I'm about ready to try it right now. So here goes. Do see a filament glow. I'm gonna turn down the light so we can see that better. It's a little hard to see, but the filament is glowing in there, and I don't see any horrible blue or purple colors or any arcing, which would indicate that it's gone gassy. So Let's check and see if we have any shorts and any emission. Okay, first off, we gotta get the film voltage up a bit higher. It was only about five, it should be 6.3 right in the red line there. Film is still glowing. Alright, check for HK shorts, good. Machine shorts, good. Cutoff control was non responsive, but I've seen that plenty of times before. Let's jump to emissions. Ooh, <laughs> that's, that's bad. That's really bad. As it says, bad. Well, let's see. Is it climbing? It seems to be climbing a little bit. I'll let this sit for 15 minutes or so and then come back and see where we're at. I let the pitcher tube cook for about an hour at 7 volts AC on the filament. And now I've just dropped it back down to 6.3 and, well, <laughs> I've seen better, but I've seen worse. This will probably produce a watchable image. Just, nah, won't be so, so great. I just pushed the life test button and it's dropping right down. But it's not dead, and like I was saying, these are getting so hard to find. Any emissions is a good sign. So next up, I want to pull out this chassis and see what's underneath. <laughs> Speaking of underneath, I am now really, really amazed at the quality, or I should say the intactness of this set. Because this set has actually got the metal bottom. I've seen a bunch of these sets and I have never 
seen this metal bottom before. I've only heard about them online. So now you can see how all of the mounting hardware is here. And so is that. Something else I'm curious about is the speaker on these sets, for some silly reason, is hardwired to the lower chassis, which has the audio amp and power supply on it. All the sets I've seen before, these wires have been cut because if you pull out this lower chassis to service it, you have to uh, either cut those wires or take the speaker with you. And this one hasn't been cut, so maybe this has never been serviced. Some of the tubes have been replaced, though, I think. That's an Admiral. And let's see. That's a Sylvania, so it's probably a replacement, although an old type replacement. Well, you know, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, Admiral, as far as I know, didn't make their own tubes. They just rebranded them. And this is a Sylvania pitcher tube. And that's a Sylvania tube. And that's a Sylvania tube. So it's hard to really say which were and were not original. Well, that's an Admiral. And let's see. Sylvania. Admiral, Hytron, RCA, another Hytron. So, we'll see. You can generally tell the, original, the, the parts are original on these sets because J on the pitcher tube, J on the yoke, J on the focus coil, J on the chassis. Half of these tubes are Admiral. Another Admiral? Maybe more than half the tubes are still Admirals. Which is odd to have so many tubes still be what, what, what are quite possibly the original tubes. You have to have the pitcher tube be in such uh, bad shape. Oh, kind of rad. Or maybe they followed the owner's uh, <laughs> directives, which were to only use Admiral tubes when replacing tubes. Alright, here's the all important thing. Oh, I see. I thought maybe the shield covered the whole bottom. But uh, it just covers the back section there. Huh. I suppose if I wanted to fabricate one of these for my other sets i could get a piece of sheet metal seems like fairly thin steel and drill one hell of a lot of holes <laughs> kind of makes me wonder sometimes where did all those other missing bottoms go this also solves another mystery which is what were all the holes around the perimeter of the chassis for I can now see that they were there to hold the bottom on. In this case, there's only one or two left, but there should have been a whole bunch around the whole bottom of the set. Well, the set also has all the original shock mounts. They seem to be in pretty darn good shape. On my other 24A12 set, I had to fabricate some new ones. Oh, and I should mention that Although this set looks just like the one that I restored recently, they're not actually the same model. The one on the left, the one that I just restored is a 20X122, which is a year older than this set, which is a 24A12. So the one on the left has a single chassis, the one on the right has a dual chassis, and has a bit more sophisticated IF stage in it. 
uh, it has a better uh, bandwidth response, a little bit more elaborate uh, power supply too, because they had the two chassis, so that it actually has more tubes in it. Flip this over to get the bolt out on the other side. Holding the bottom up. Okay, here's the chassis underside. And uh, it sure does look to be all original. I don't see any replaced capacitors at all. that is. Looks like some coating from something that might have fallen off. Here's that focus control that gave me trouble on some other sets, but this is the beefier 5 watt flavor. It's got the crappy original sand coated re power resistor in there. Otherwise, yeah, geez, I don't see any signs of any repairs whatsoever. Hmm, so maybe this guy, though. I don't think it's been resoldered, but this is the only one I see that isn't this paper style with the one black stripe. This has got some kind of early plastic housing. Could be original though. Uh, I like don't see any cuts or bad solder jobs or anything there. Ooh, the power resistor looks pretty fried. That's one that feeds the horizontal output tube. A lot of power goes through that guy. It looks nice and bright and green, but that could very well be original. That's what actually feeds the output of the tuner into the IF stages behind this cover. Here's a close look at those rubber mounts. So it's a thick block of rubber here, metal chassis and metal bracket. So this chassis can actually float a bit. I think that was isolated from the speaker mounted on the cabinet. Alright, well, you saw my earlier video, I am definitely working on a Philco 3930 radio right now. <laughs> but this, this sure will be interesting to work on when I get to it. Something else I'm noticing is that this tuner looks different than the other Admiral tuners I've worked on. I know they came with several tuner styles over the years and this one's definitely different. It may even be a replacement because the other ones I've seen had a mounting screw through this hole, this hole, this hole, and this hole. And this is missing some and it just looks different. There's a gap down here and a gap up here and from underneath the drum looked a little bit different. Oh, I can see a date in there. May 18th, 1949. Hmm. I guess one last thing to look at is what's inside this high voltage cage. I've removed the screws holding the high voltage cover on, so it's ready to come off. The set still has what appears to be the original power cord. Unfortunately, it's very frayed here, so it'll have to be replaced. That's a shame because otherwise it's very pliable. I suppose I can cut this off and use it in uh, maybe a, a radio. So let's see what's inside here. Right, well, I can see we got a Kenrad tube. As far as the flyback goes. Looks to be okay. This is a fuse set. You can see it down in there. So 
unless somebody replaced it with something like a 10 amp fuse <laughs> that should have protected the high voltage circuitry if there were any problems. Looks like the original high voltage resistor in there too. I've had these, uh, or I've found these bad in some other sets. And uh, replacements are available that are darn near the same as the original. There are some taps here, but those aren't actually used, so you just need one big old honking power resistor. Alright, so this will be a fun little set to work on, but only after I finish a whole bunch of other projects. I just want to take a quick look at it while, uh, since I just got it, I always like to take a look at sets when I first get them to see what, uh, what kind of state they're in. So I hope you guys enjoyed this look at yet another Admiral Bakelite TV.